So we have our basic material applied and we're ready to create our light source. So I'm going to choose a top view for that, okay? And we're going to create a daylight system for this. So I'm going to switch in my create panel to the systems tab. And in here, I'm going to create the daylight, not sunlight, daylight system. Once I click this, Max is going to ask me if I want to create a photographic exposure control. Now, it's suggesting the photographic exposure control because I already have Manta Ray as my renderer. This is important. If I forget to set my renderer before, Max is going to suggest a different exposure control and you have to change this later okay so i'm going to click yes because i do want exposure control and then i can click and drag to create the system i'm going to click and drag to create the compass and once i let go of the mouse i'm going to drag up and down to create the sunlight okay so i'm just going to drag a lot but just make sure in your scenes that the sun is above your biggest geometry. The reason for that is that if the sun is not above all your geometry, the shadows are going to be clipped off. Okay, so you need the sun to be higher than your highest geometry. Now, the height doesn't matter, it just has to be higher than your highest geometry. Once that's done, I'm going to switch to the modify panel and I'm going to set this system for mental ray. So I'm going to change the sunlight to mental ray sun and the skylight to mental ray sky. And again, Max is going to pop me a question. Right now, is asking me if I want to create a mental ray physical sky environment map. And since this is an interior scene and we're not going to put any textures in the render, it is a good thing. It's going to help with the light, with the light behavior of our scene. So it's very good. And I'm going to click yes. So once that's done, we have the sun. Now we can set this sun position in three ways. I can do it manually and just choose the move tool and move it wherever I want. I can do it by date, time and location, or I can upload a weather data file. I usually choose date, time and location because it's a little more accurate. Okay, so I'm going to click setup. And in here, I can choose the time, the day, and I can even choose the location. Okay, so if I click here, I have a lot of different places that I can choose from to get the exact sun position of that place. I'm going just to choose the time, something like 9 a.m. for me is good. And there's one thing here, if I switch back to the top view, you can see that the sun is positioned that way. Maybe we want the sun to come in through the window, if we want that, we have to change the north direction. Okay, now the north direction only goes enough in one way. So if you try to push it up and it doesn't go, you have to go all the way to the other side. So just choose your position. I'm going to choose something like this. For me, it's good. And there you go. We have our sun. Let's just do a quick render to see how this looks right now. So as you can see, it's pretty dark. Now the sun is okay and is behaving okay, but we have a few things we need to set up. First, we need to add a few portal lights to this. The portal light is a helper. It will help guide the sunlight into the scene. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the create panel and I'm going to choose lights. And in photometric, we have the metal ray sky portal. So I'm going to switch back to the front view here. 
and I'm just going to click and drag to create a rectangle. This rectangle has to be around the entrances of your light sources. So this one is in this opening here. You want the portal to be just outside your opening. And then I'm going to shift and drag to duplicate this. I'll do it as an instance because if I change something in one, I want the other one to follow and I'm going to click OK. Then it's just a matter of rotating 90 degrees, placing it and maybe we can scale this better because it's probably too big. I'm just going to scale this a little bit. It doesn't matter if it is too big, it just bothers me a bit. So I'm going to leave it like that. And we're going to do another quick render. There you go. So it's a little better. We can see a little better the interior, but it's still not perfect. There's one last thing that we need to do here, which is the exposure control. Now, Max created the exposure control for us, but it's set to an exterior scene and this is not an exterior scene. So we need to change this. So we're going to go to the rendering tab and in here you can choose exposure, environment or effects. It's the same window, okay? And there you go, we have exposure here. Right now we have the photographic exposure control. If Max created the wrong exposure control, you can change this here or if we accidentally click no, you can choose the photographic exposure control now. So once that's done, we can choose a few presets for the lighting or we can change this manually. If you understand something about photography, you can choose the photographic and just change this here or you can use the exposure value and as you can see, it's going to change the lower values for you. So basically, higher values are for more exterior scenes, scenes that has more light, and lower values are for more interior scenes, scenes with not that much light. So if I choose a preset, you see that if I use indoor daylight, it's going to switch from 15 to 10. Okay, so this is a good value. We can test the render here. And as you can see, this is much better, okay? So this is already a good start and we're going to change a few things in the next lesson.